Sporkies, Sporkies, a variety of booze and dishes. Gospel Sporkies Board is a variety of the way God's word reaches. God speaks to us, he nourishes us in so, in so many ways. Whether working, being educated, poems or acting, he is in the midst of our days. Whether preaching or teaching or singing or praying or reading his holy word, is what it's all about, is what it's all about. Um, we need a word today. Hallelujah. Just a word from the Lord as our mother Teresa Arilla sang. Praise the Lord. We need a word. So we do um, have a word today that the Lord has given us for such a time as this. Um, all of us, one time or, or another, have prayed and ask God for something and had to wait for an answer. Waiting is perhaps one of the most difficult things that we ever have to do. We hate the fact that we have to wait for something. We do. We are of this new microwave generation. We want things when we want it, and we want it now. We live in a society where everything is instant. We have instant potatoes instant cameras. There's instant credit. They even have instant pudding. All of this simply says that you can have what you want without weight. We have become a society where delays are not accepted. Delays are not tolerated. We've become a society of impatient people, and now it has poured over into the church. Oh, come on today. But the fact of life is that delays are an everyday occurrence. It's a part of life. We hate to admit it, but we all face delays in our life. If you go to the doctor's office, they'll have you wait in a waiting room until it's your turn to see the doctor. If you go shopping, you got to wait in line to check out. If you go to a fast food restaurant, you have to wait in a slow line for fast food. Somebody will catch that later. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's easy to become distracted when we're facing delays. And sometimes you might give, on, give up on what you're waiting for. As it relates to your spiritual life, the things of God, things don't always happen with the snap of a finger. Sometimes God does some things instantaneously. He does. But other times, he has us to wait. Somebody say wait. You must understand that the waiting time is not wasted time. Your waiting time is not wasted time. Anything and any time you have to spend waiting on God is never wasted. It is never wasted if you do it wisely. Just a note for those who are stubborn and hard-headed. Sometimes it is God that is waiting. He's waiting for us to obey him so he can bless us. Hallelujah. God will not bless us if we're living in disobedience. So we have got to be doing things God's way. When we face times of delay, we can become frustrated, discouraged, and even angry. All of this combined together can become a breeding ground for the enemy to tempt you to quit and give up. But you ought to declare today, I won't quit. I can't quit. Have you ever noticed that when things are going well, many have no desire for God? When everything is going great and all your bills are paid and you got money left over and you can do the things that you want to do, a lot of people have no desire for God. But tragedy gives us and it drives us to want to pray. Burdens drive us to seek help. So today our scripture is talking about 
Daniel. Daniel had a burden. Daniel had been been through a trying time in his life. And just as a lot of us are going through a very trying time, he was not one to say that he should have done it or deserved what he was going through. But before the Lord showed up, Daniel was burdened, he was secluded, and he was seeking relief. So we're going to look at the book of Daniel chapter 10 today. Verse 10, and I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. It says, a hand touched me and pulled me and pulled me by my hands and knees. Daniel, he said, man of quality, listen carefully to my message and get up on your feet. Stand at attention. I've been set or sent to bring you news. When he had said this, I stood up, but I was still shaking. Relax, Daniel, he continued. Don't be afraid for the moment you decided to humble yourself to receive understanding, your prayer was heard. And I set out to come to you, but I was waylaid by an angel, prince of the kingdom of Persia, and was delayed for a good three weeks. But then Michael, one of the chief angel princes, intervened to help me. I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And now I'm here to help you understand what will eventually happen to your people. The vision has to do with what's ahead. Verse 15 says, and while he was saying all of this, I looked at the ground and said nothing. Then I was surprised by something like a human hand that touched my lips. I opened my mouth and started talking to the messenger. When I saw you, master, I was terror stricken. My knees turned to water. I couldn't move. How can I, a lowly servant, speak to you, my master? I am paralyzed. I can hardly breathe. Then this human-like figure touched me again and gave me strength and said, don't be afraid, friend. Peace. And everything is going to be all right. Take courage. Be strong. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise for the word. So here, Daniel had prayed for three weeks. Three weeks straight with no answer. Not one answer to what he was praying for. But he did not give up. He did not lose heart. He did not faint. Fasting can never be prescribed a prescribed ritual. It can't be something that you feel like you can do to change God's mind or force God into doing something. Um, but like Daniel, Daniel's heart outweighed his desire for anything. A burden is hard, but not always a bad thing. It drives us to seek the Lord. Burdens will sometimes drive us to seek the Lord. So after three weeks of fasting, Daniel sees a vision. Daniel tells us that a touched hand, a hand touched him and sat him on his hands and knees, telling him, stand up. And I found that the Hebrew word for hand also means power and strength. Hallelujah. God lets him know that he is important to him. And he wants Daniel to stand up and get this important message. Daniel needed to be in a ready position to receive and understand the vision. So people of God, we've got to be ready. We've got to be in position to receive what God desires to speak to us. We've got to be in the right position. So today we're going to talk about delays. Hallelujah. What causes delays? As we saw in verse 13, and I'm going to read the New Living Translation says, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Demonic activity can cause delays. Amen. Daniel's answer was delayed by the activity of demonic forces sent to destruct or disrupt the plan of God. But this delay was only temporary. Somebody ought to put in the chat. It's only temporary. God's plan will be accomplished. Verse 13 continues to say, then Michael, one of the top officers 
of the heavenly army came to help me. So I was able to break through these spirit rulers of Persia. Hallelujah. He was able to break through because Michael came to give him help. Just know that no matter what you're going through, God will send help to you. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. It's what it says, wherefore we have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. There's sometimes that Satan will try to hinder what God has for you or hinder the people that is trying to help you. Hallelujah. Satan will continue hard to hinder us from being all that God wants us to be and from doing everything God wants you to do. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. So the second thing is three things I want you to know. The second things that can cause delays are disputes. We can cause our own delays by what we do and how we treat people, how we act. First Peter 3 and 7 says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. I believe that a lot of our delays is a direct result of a dispute, whether in the home or with other people. I'm saying honor each other and honor God's word by not allowing the sun, as scripture says, to go down on our wrath. We've got to be responsible for what we do and how we act and how we treat people in society in today. Amen. Amen. I believe that God, um, according to his word, told us to be angry, but sin not. Amen. And he told us to give no place or no room to the devil. A lot of people get angry and sin, and it quickly opens up the door for Satan to come in and, and cause havoc in your home. Hallelujah. If anger is not dealt with quickly, and I say quickly, it will fester and it'll become worse. Your anger will turn into bitterness and then your bitterness poisons your spirit and you will become resentful in your attitude toward your brother or sister. Hallelujah. When we become angry at each other, we say and do things that we really don't mean. And as a result, feelings get hurt. Walls are erected and the blessings are delayed. We block our own blessings by what we do and what we say. Sometimes there are divine delays. What do you mean, preacher? And sometimes this is the hardest one to deal with. Divine delays come without explanation. Divine delays are hard to handle, especially in crucial and critical times in your life. When I think about these divine delays, I think about Mary and Martha when they sent for Jesus to come and heal Lazarus. Jesus delayed going to them. And as a result, Lazarus died. This was a critical and a crucial time in their lives. Yet the Lord Jesus tarried without explanation or it seemed as though. St. John 11 and 5. Let's get it real quick. It says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still at the same place where he was. Can you imagine needing the help of God? And they sent for Jesus to come and he stayed there two extra days. Now. This is hard for us to understand. You might wonder, why in the world did he delay in coming to heal Lazarus? Why in the world did he delay from setting him free? Hallelujah. Sometimes the understanding only comes after the miracle. I believe that there are four divine reasons why the delays. One, 
God wants to demonstrate his power over our impossibilities. You've heard the saying, when you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot on it, tie a knot in it and hang on. Well, when it, you come to the end of your rope, you got to know that Jesus is right there waiting for you. Hallelujah. So the second reason I think he wanted to demonstrate his power over death. Death has no power, no glory, no victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? When Lazarus died, the Lord Jesus waited until he had been dead for four days. Lazarus was dead for four days before Jesus got there. People in that day are much like the people of our day today. They were superstitious. They like to explain away the supernatural power and the supernatural miracle working power of God. Hallelujah. They would have said he wasn't really dead. If Jesus had come earlier, he wasn't really dead. Maybe he was in a coma. Maybe he was just sick. But but after four days, everybody knew he was dead. It gave God an opportunity to show up and show out. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to type, God, show up and show out. Has he ever showed up in your life? Times when you needed him? Hallelujah. Times when you didn't know how you were going to make it. Times when you were in despair and you felt like there was no way out and God showed up and he didn't just show up, but he showed out. He showed his glory. He showed his power. He showed his strength. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. And if he did it for Lazarus, he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. So he sometimes um, delay in order to show forth and demonstrate his power, even over death. Uh, number three, to build their faith in him. When you know that all hope is gone and only a miracle will do, and then when that miracle happens, it becomes a faith-building experience. I've experienced a miracle from the Lord, and it just builds faith. It just builds your confidence in him knowing hallelujah and, and realizing that he is all power. He has all power in his hands and that there is nothing that is too hard for him. And the last thing to bring honor and glory to God. He does what he does so that God gets the glory. Everything the Lord Jesus did was to bring honor and glory to God. And when he makes miracles in our lives, we got to make sure that we're going back and giving God the thanks and giving God the credit, honor, and praise because it's nothing good that we've done, but it's because of him. So I have a question. Who are we when facing delays? And then I go back to um, the word in Daniel. Two times Daniel is told that he was greatly beloved. Another translation says that, Daniel, your God thinks highly of you. And then another translation says, Daniel, God loves you very much. Another translation says, oh, Daniel, man of high esteem. So when you're facing delays in your life, you got to remember that you are greatly loved. I know he said it for Daniel, but I'm saying it to you. You are greatly loved. You're highly esteemed. Your God thinks highly of you. Hallelujah. God loves you very much, sister. God loves you very much, my brother. So encourage yourself in the Lord. Know that you can make it through any trial, any tribulation, any temptation, any test. Even in the midst of delays, God loves you and he's on your side. If you don't remember this, you will become a target, a prime target for the enemy. He'll jump on your shoulder and say, if God loved you, then he wouldn't allow this delay in your life. Or feel like if God loved you, then this would have happened or this wouldn't have happened. Um, sometimes he'll have you looking at other people and pointing out other people that have gotten their answer. And because you didn't, you feel like God has forgotten you and God has forsaken you. But I stopped by to encourage you today that God loves you. He loves you more than you can even imagine. Hallelujah. The devil never shows you 
the the persistence and the faithfulness of other people. You looking at what other people got and how other people are blessed, but you don't know what they did to get what they got. You don't know what they had to go through to get where they are today. He doesn't tell you that these folks have, are being blessed because they refuse to listen to the devil. They refuse to give up. No, he didn't tell you that because he wants you to give up. He wants you to quit. But you ought to say and declare, not today, devil. I won't quit. I won't give up. When you're facing delays in your life, you got to remember that you're highly thought of and you're highly favored. Let's look at the word of God in Psalm 8, 4. It says, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou has made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and thou has put all things under his feet. Somebody ought to praise God because everything is under his feet. Look at what this scripture says about us. We are crowned with glory and honor. We've been given dominion to walk over the work of God's hands. The last part says that he has put all things under our feet. So it sounds like that's a great place to give God praise because what we're going through, what we're facing is under our feet. Hallelujah. We're favored by God and he has put all things under our feet. Yes, Lord. You ought to stomp right where you are. Hallelujah. And say it's under my feet. And that means if it's under your feet, you got the victory. Hallelujah. Praise God right there. When you're facing delays in your life, remember you are highly esteemed. When we esteem something, it means that we give it value and worth. In fact, the word esteem means value, worth, or being respected. A lot of people determine their value and worth by what other people think of them, by what other people um view as great or what other people say is wonderful. But people of God, if you want to know how valuable you are and what you are worth to God, all you got to do is look at that old rugged cross. Because on that cross, it gives you an understanding that he loved you so much that he hung, bled, and died just for you. Hallelujah. He loved you so much that he gave up his throne and glory put on a sinful nature and died on the cross. Hallelujah. So that you and I can have a right to the tree of life. Don't ever determine your worth and your value based upon what other people say or think about you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. More importantly, you got to say, what does God say about me? Hallelujah. God loves you so much. Hallelujah, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but instead will have everlasting life. Let me tell you who you are when you're facing delays. You are greatly loved. You are highly thought of, and you are highly esteemed. You have value. You have value. That's who you are. Praise the Lord. Are you going through anything right now? I know at Christ Church, we all are. As a part of um, the ministry, we have been going through some things. But you know what? Greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. And even if you're not a part of Christ Church, Satan comes to discourage you. Life will happen and we'll become discouraged because we've been delayed on some things that we are expecting God to not do, but have already done by now. And you may not have had it, but God is not through blessing you. Just hold on. Hang in there. Keep the faith. Know that just because you've been delayed doesn't mean you've been denied. I'll say that again. Just because you've been delayed doesn't mean you've been denied. It may be the result of a demonic activity. 
It might have been a result of some deed that you've done. Or it might be a divine delay so that God can demonstrate his power, demonstrate, hallelujah, on behalf of your life, how he works miracles. Hallelujah. So when delays come, we got to know who we are. We got to stand up, people of God, and know who we are. You got to know that you're greatly loved. You're highly thought of. You are highly esteemed by God. God is working with you. When you face those lonely delays in your life, know that God is, he said, I'll never leave you. nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you always, even until the end. God comes alongside of you to pick you up and to strengthen you. I speak strength today to those that are burdened down. I speak strength to those that feel weak. Hallelujah. Know that God comforts you by speaking to you and listening to your cries. Cry out to him. Hallelujah. He will listen to you. He will hear you. And he won't just do that, but he'll stretch out his hands to help you through this time of delay. Again, you might be delayed, but that doesn't mean you've been denied. Hallelujah. Remember, delays are not denials. Hallelujah. Sometimes it might be a timing issue. We know that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Hallelujah. But his timing is good. His will is good and it's perfect. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Minister Ezekiel Bird in our ministry sings a song that says, you can't hurry, God. You just have to wait. You got to trust him and give him time, no matter how long it takes. So we got to wait on God, no matter how how many times we feel delayed. We got to wait on God. Hallelujah. It might be that God has something better for you later down the road. You can't hurry, God. You just have to wait.